I'm Aurika Savitskaita, a co-founder of HelmetBasedVentilation.com. On our website, you will find all the research or medical guidelines about the helmets and how to use them on a patient for non-invasive ventilation. Today, I will be talking about the helmets that I have here, and all these helmets are made in the US. I'm missing one helmet, which is uh, made by company Amron. We are located in California. So this is a um, Ceylon helmet. It's made in Texas. This is helmet uh, from company Exto. They are located in Michigan. And this is Subcell that is made in Rhode Island. So all of these helmets can be used for the non-invasive ventilation. And uh, I did review uh, in my previous uh, videos how to use them, how to connect them. But here are a few big differences. And I think it, those are very important, especially when you applying them on a patient. So these two helmets, the C-Long and the x company, they have a hard ring, as you can see. These two have a hard ring, and then they have the non-latex uh, silicone that makes that nice seal around the neck. Now, the subcell, why it's so different, because this part, is soft so it's a little bit thicker plastic uh, just to keep that shape but this is actually a soft material now this is why is it important because when uh, we put the seal on helmet on you can feel how heavy the ring is and actually it's pressing on your shoulders so for the patient it's very uncomfortable you have to put some padding or something to make sure that it doesn't press too hard so patients don't get uh, ulcers, skin ulcers. On this helmet, because of the hard ring, what is happening when we lay back, the ring presses against the bed or a pillow and it pushes the helmet forward. So then you end up having an air leak right here on this side because of that pressure and we don't want to have air leaks here. Now, with the subcell, what is nice is that when you put it on, you can lay back, you can move your head, not gonna, it's not gonna bother you on your neck, it's not gonna bother in the back of your head, and also by moving around, because of their uh, tight neck seal, you're not gonna have an uh, air leak. Another uh, important information is about the Ceylon helmet and uh, you know this this helmet was used for the study so we really appreciate that it was made by the company and we were able to test it but it has a couple pieces so first of all it comes from uh, two parts and uh, these two rings we go inside as you can see this way so um, it's very important now when you put these pieces together before putting on a patient now you have to use these clips because what happens uh, if you're not going to put the clip on this helmet will disconnect the part a from part b and that's what you don't want to happen when you are delivering oxygen and pressure for the patient I noticed uh, during one of the videos when I put the clip on, it actually broke. So that's um, not a good thing. Uh, another thing that actually the same with Ceylon uh, and Exto helmets is that you have to have scissors and measure the patient's neck and make the hole. Uh, I can tell you that when patient is in a respiratory distress, this is the one thing that you really don't want it to fuss with and do. So you have to measure, you have to make sure you cut it very straight so there are no, no chances of the silicone for ripping off. And actually this is a helmet that was used in a patient and you can see how it got ripped. And um, I don't know if it was cut not properly or just the silicone was um, not durable. Now, with the subcell, we don't have that problem because 
this part is very strong, it's not gonna rip. Well, maybe it will eventually, but I can tell you that it can be used multiple times on a patient. And also it comes in sizes. So now, when you have a patient in respiratory distress, you don't have to worry about measuring the neck. You can look at the patient and you will know, does he need the small, medium, or large? So this one is actually small and I use it in myself and we were able to put the small one on a, you know, a bigger man and he was comfortable with it. So, uh, nice feature about the C-Log is that we have these two optional connections for the input and output. So that's very helpful. And um, just want to mention that today is April 24th. And these companies we approving design as we speak. And I noticed that the sub cell is responding very well to the comments that come in from clinicians and we are able to, uh, to adjust their design and make it more comfortable for the patients and for clinicians to use it. Uh, same ha happening with the x and the C-Long. We also, I know that working on improving the design. Another thing is that with, if I'm, um, I'm the one who's gonna use it for the patient, or even if I'm gonna wear one, I can say that the self-self is the winner right now. I don't have Amron helmet, so I cannot talk about that, but the self-self is a soft one piece. I know that nothing is gonna get disconnected, so there's no troubleshooting for this helmet. To summarize, this is my personal opinion uh, about the helmets. And uh, today is April 24th. Things are changing fast and manufacturers, they are improving the design as we speak. I can say C-Long uh, made the first helmet that was used in a hospital and we really appreciate for that. And we already made some improvements for it. Now, I'm very impressed with other two companies that were able to jump on board and make the helmet and have the final product here available for the physicians to use. The one thing that I wanna mention about the sub self that the company owner, Michael Lombardi, he worked on the helmet for the diving community for over 10 years. So it is very nice that he was able to apply his knowledge for this type of helmet that can be used in a hospital. When I will get the helmet from Amron company, I will make a separate video about their helmet and uh, it will be posted on our website. So all the updates about helmet designs, about new manufacturers, you will find in our website, helmetbasedventilation.com.